Michelle Williams rocketed to fame in the 2000s when she joined one of the top-selling female groups of all time, Destiny's Child. With Michelle a part of the group, they received three Grammy Awards and sold over 60 million records worldwide. But in recent years, Michelle has made shocking revelations about being in Destiny's Child and also about her mental health. Here are the struggles and the downfall of Michelle Williams. Tanitra Michelle Williams began singing in her church choir at age seven in her hometown of Rockford, Illinois. She doubted her ability to make a career as a singer, so she studied criminal justice at Illinois State University instead for two years, but left to pursue her music career. She then started working as a backup singer for artists and toured with singer Monica in 1999. Then in January 2000, she was invited to join Destiny's Child as they were in search of a new member or members following their split with the original members Latoya Luckett and Latavia Robertson. The group convinced her to go by her middle name Michelle instead of Tanitra. Farrah Franklin was also invited to join Destiny's Child after she was hired to be an extra in the music video for Bills Bills Bills, but she was released from the group after only six months for missing a number of performances and appearances. Michelle was first heard on their number one single, Independent Women Part 1, and went on to participate in their massively successful 2001 album, Survivor, their 2004 album, Destiny Fulfilled, the holiday release, Eight Days of Christmas, and the remix album, This Is The Remix. With Michelle a part of the group, Destiny's Child became a worldwide phenomenon. Their harmonies improved, all members were able to have solo parts, and the group sold over 35 million records with Michelle now in the lineup. One seems to hear words of good cheer from everywhere, feeling the air. Gaily they ring while people sing songs of good cheer. Christmas is here. Merry, 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 merry Christmas. Merry, 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 merry Christmas. They released hit after hit, winning awards, and breaking ground in the process. Songs like Bootylicious, Independent Women, Survivor, and Lose My Breath topped the charts. But Michelle was suffering in private as she and fellow Destiny Child members Kelly Rowland and Beyonce hit the mainstream. She even tried to talk to her manager at the time, which was Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles, but he didn't understand. At the age of 25, had I had a name to what I was feeling at the time, I would have disclosed that I've been suffering from depression. You know, I didn't know until I was in my 30s what was going on. I just thought it was growing pains. I just thought I'm turning into a woman. So I've been suffering since the age of between 13 and 15. Wow. I just did, like I said, at that age, I didn't know what to call it. So when I disclosed it to um, our manager at the time, bless his heart, he was like, y'all just signed a multi-million dollar deal. You're about to go on tour. What do you have to be depressed about? And it was it, Matthew Knowles. Yeah, Matthew Knowles. And he, Beyonce's dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure. I went to him, you know, but it's kind of like, he, he could have been right. You know, at the time I should, I should be, I think he wanted me to be grateful, which I was, but I was still sad, you know? And so I just, um, I want to normalize this mental health discussion. In 2002, while still in the group, she released her solo debut gospel album, Heart to Yours, which sold over 200,000 albums worldwide. Her second solo album, Do You Know, was released in 2004 and received generally positive reviews, but stalled at number 120 on the Billboard 200 chart, only selling 10,000 copies in its first week. Beyonce and Kelly also started working on their own solo projects, which were all successful. During her time in the group, Michelle dealt with insecurities about not being a fan favorite in the group or living in the shadow of the other girls. Destiny's Child released their fourth and final studio album, Destiny Fulfilled, in 2004 before breaking up for good in 2006 to focus on their solo careers. Michelle didn't realize how serious her depression was until she was in her early 30s. Following the group's split, she got into acting and started doing Broadway musicals. Her third studio album, Unexpected, was released in October 2008 and got positive reviews but only sold 14,000 copies in its first week. By 2013, she was suicidal and opened up to the world about her battle with depression and her decision to seek treatment. Um, I wouldn't say it was a reaction to once I got in the industry. Um, 
I believe once I look back, mm -hmm. like at the age of like 15 and 16 years old, I'll look back and see, wow, I secluded myself a lot, I slept a lot. Um, although I was still a little active, but I just can recall some things in, during that age and knowing, okay, you were dealing with some depression then. Um, I was bullied, but I was bullied more so in elementary school, and maybe that could have, you know, had, um, had something to do with it. But when I opened up about depression, it was an accident. I didn't plan it. It was no strategic move to talk about. Somehow we just talked about happiness, and, and I just talked about how it is a process, mm -hmm. and how um, someone told me, and I, and I just stuck with it, how happiness is a choice. There were times in depression where I could stay in the bed all week and I would just maybe get up to use the bathroom or something. But it's like, girl, you got to get up. But the general public ignored her admission to her struggles. In February of that year, Beyonce reunited with Destiny's Child for her Super Bowl performance and their performance received great feedback. But a lot of people noticed how uncomfortable Michelle looked during the performance and it didn't help that R&B singer Keisha Cole felt the need to publicly take shots at her and call her whack. She tweeted, I think I was frightened to blink for a second. Then Michelle sung and woke my ass up from my days. She's always fucking up the groove. She became the butt of jokes when a blog titled Poor Michelle had a compilation of photos and videos poking fun at her about quote unquote all the times Michelle got the short end of the Destiny's Child stick. Then the memes started circling the internet about her missteps, struggles, and the times she was mistreated or left out by Beyonce and Kelly. But Michelle sort of brushed it off. In 2018, she revealed that she had fallen into a deep depression again shortly after splitting from her fiancé Chad Johnson and reuniting with her Destiny's Child sisters at Beyonce's 2018 Coachella performance. And Michelle checked herself into a mental health facility to fight depression. So for months, I was slipping and slipping and slipping. And before you know it, I was at the bottom of the pit looking up like, oh my God, am I really here again? And I suffered by myself. I didn't want to tell anybody. I, he didn't know until I went to the hospital. Um, I didn't want anyone to be like, oh my gosh, here we go again. You know, I thought you were over it. You've been traveling. So you've been, de you've yeah. been dealing with the kind of feeling before, but not to this degree? Um, this is probably the second heavy time. Okay. Yeah. And that's why I didn't say anything, because I didn't want people to be like, here we go again. I thought you were over it. I thought I was practically healed of it. You know, like, mm -hmm. okay, you're doing the work. And then you got comfortable, like, oh, I feel good. You know, and just got really, really a dark, dark, heavy anger, um, questioning my existence, but knowing I had great things, but why was I questioning, why am I here? In December, she announced she was taking a leave of absence from her role in the Broadway musical, Once on This Island, under doctor's orders. In late 2019, she returned to the stage on the reality singing competition television series The Masked Singer and admitted that being anonymous and performing in costume helped take away the insecurities she had about her voice. And that was so liberating for me to just be me and no one know who I am. But then I could, it was therapeutic for me because while I'm here, I'm still getting my work and healing christening all over again of, you know, being back out here musically as an artist because I honestly, I had put the mic down. I was like, no, I'll just speak and mentor, you know, and just tell my story, but I won't sing really ever again. I really haven't sang at all this year except for this show. Knowing what I was overcoming, then kind of like, girl, why would you think you would never sing again? Girl, get out here, show the world who you are. And there are people out there who do love you, who do love me, who do love what I have to offer. Being anonymous just helped me be wild and free. I am brought to tears after every performance because you guys have helped take away the insecurities I have about my voice. In an interview with the Los Angeles Times, she said, when I was revealed, I just felt like I made it. I felt like I overcame something. I felt like overcoming the fear of performing again because I voluntarily took this entire year off. The only reason why I did the show was because they were like, you would be masked, 
no one would know who you are. And on her mental health, she said, I'm feeling good, especially around the holidays, because for people with depression, the holidays can be very difficult. If you've lost a loved one, if you've lost a job, or some people just have seasonal depression, and I'm actually doing well. What do you guys think about how Michelle is treated by the general public? And do you think it's had a major effect on her mentally? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and make sure you like this video and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.